Welcome back to How It's Made. Once again, music is being served up on a platter. Vinyl records have an ever-increasing following among collectors and DJs. To cater to this market, some record companies are releasing more music on vinyl, a manufacturing process that is a carefully orchestrated performance. To get back into the groove, they first have to cut a master record. This flat disc is made of aluminium and it will be the core of the master. The surface has a gritty texture early on, but it's sanded down and polished smooth. The aluminium discs are placed on a conveyor belt and they ride towards a device that will coat them with a veneer of lacquer. The disc enters the curtain coater. Nitrocellulose lacquer oozes out of a long thin opening forming a veil or curtain. As the disc passes through the curtain it's coated with the lacquer. Rollers with scrapers catch the runoff. The excess lacquer is reused. The lacquer starts to dry immediately. The solvents evaporate and the veneer hardens into a nail polish like finish. At this inspection station, workers scrutinize each lacquered disc for pits, bumps or dirt. Even a minor imperfection won't be tolerated, so the rejection rate is high, about 50%. The rejects are recycled. The good masters are rimmed with plastic edging. This will stop the discs from rubbing together during stacking and damaging the finish. Next, the discs are held under a hydraulic puncher that cuts a hole in the center. Then it's placed on a spindle. A robotic arm slides a plastic ring down the spindle, depositing it around the center hole of the disc. Like the plastic edging, the ring will also space the discs apart. Now, the master discs are ready to take a trip to the studio. The lacquer disc is about to be cut. The engineer places it on the recording machine, called a lathe. He peels the protective ribbing away from the rim. He places a vacuum line at the center, which suctions to the underside of the disc and holds it in place. The engineer now moves the cutter and a microscope above the disc. He lowers the cutter onto the outer edge of the disc and it does a test cut. He positions a microscope just above the test groove and then he peers into it. He makes adjustments to the cut and he's ready to record. The lathe cuts the leading groove and the music begins. The sapphire tipped cutter etches the sound into the disc. From start to finish the recording will be one continuous groove. The computer monitors the cutting and adjusts the spacing between the grooves where needed. A small vacuum draws up scrap as the cutter carves out the groove. Some believe vinyl produces a warmer sound and has more depth than digital recordings. Creating an analog disc can be challenging. To produce bass, the cutter has to make big wide grooves that take up a lot of space. And although the grooves can touch, they can't cross one another. At the end of the recording, the cutter lifts and the master disc is ready for inspection. If it's acceptable, the engineer places a stabilizing platform on it and scribes a unique serial number into the lacquer. Soon, this master disc will be making a big impression.
The master disc has just been cut, but the lacquer surface is far too delicate to play. It's been produced solely to act as a mould. It will literally be pressed into service to make tougher versions of the recorded grooves. And this will enable the manufacturers to make many copies from just one. In the next step, the lacquer disc is washed with soap and water. It's sprayed with tin chloride and liquid silver. The tin chloride is a sensitizer that helps the silver stick to the lacquer. Small bits of silver that don't stick are washed away. In seconds, one side of the lacquer has become a stunning silver disc, with the grooves intact. A duller metal is added to the silvered side in order to really stiffen the disc. It's fastened to a spindle on the underside of a tank lid. The disc spins. It's rinsed one more time. The water in the tank below is green because these nickel nuggets are dissolving into it. The lid is lowered and the spinning disc is immersed in the solution. An electric charge fuses the nickel to the silver and the nickel settles neatly into the grooves. Now it's removed from the tank and the metal layer is prized away from the original lacquered disc. This metal disc is a stamper that will be used to press vinyl records. And the lacquer disc is discarded. The exact center of the stamper is located. A worker places it under the microscope, which is part of an optical centering punch. As the stamper disc spins, he aligns the grooves with a guide in the viewfinder. When he finds the center, he punches a hole there. The stamper disc is clamped into a trimming machine. The disc turns and a cutting wheel trims the edge, cutting the stamper disc to a diameter of 32 centimeters. Next, the labels are prepared. A punch bores into the center of a stack of them, making holes. Then, the labels are placed on a mini press. It rises to another cutter, which rounds them out. Black polyvinyl chloride pellets are poured into a hopper. The pellets fall into an extruder, which turns them into hot, rubbery pieces called biscuits. Hoists above and below push labels to each side of the biscuit. Suction cups hold them there while a carriage moves the biscuit forward, then drops the biscuit and labels in the press. Two stampers mounted in the press apply 100 tons of pressure. They melt and mold the biscuits into a record. A quick cooling cycle hardens it and bonds the labels to the vinyl. A carriage then transports it to a trimming table. The table spins the record against a knife and cuts away the ragged edges. Then the table takes the trimmed record to the finish stack and the process begins again. This is a well choreographed musical production. As one record is lifted out of the press, the next one goes in. Pressing and trimming of a vinyl record takes just 28 seconds. But it's sure to get hours of play by enthusiasts who refuse to buy into the digital revolution. And still believe that vinyl is a cut above. <laughs>